everyone! Today I am so excited because I am going to give you a review of the Glaminatrix Shadows. So if you have not heard about this brand already, this is an Australian brand. I ended up ordering six of their shadows because I have been seeing their Instagram page for so long and I have just been drooling over their shimmers because they looked so beautiful. So I ended up caving and ordering six shadows and then the owner was so sweet that she wanted to send me some extra shadows to try out so I now have 16 of them. So thank you so much for sending these to me, I really appreciate it because these are so beautiful and I really can't wait for you guys to see these. I do have some thoughts on them, I have played with all of them because I was sick like I've said a couple of times and I didn't want to film. So when I was sick I was playing with these shadows and trying to make up my opinion on them. So I definitely have some thoughts that I want to let you know. Uh, most of them are positive though, So, but I definitely have a couple of things that I just kind of want to mention. So first off, the way they came packaged was they come in a little thing like this. So obviously you have the shadow inside. I didn't want to put any shadows inside because as you will see, these are very hard to open. So you have to be extremely careful when pulling these out because I almost ruined like two of my shadows. So basically there's like this little flap inside of here that you need to pull out and when you try to pull this out like it's it's really like tight in here so you have to really pull before it loosens and so I almost like dropped two of these because I had a hard time getting them out so if you do end up ordering any of these just make sure that when you take them out that you're being careful with them because otherwise you might have a little bit of an accident which I did with one of the shadows and I had to kind of repress it into the pan but it's not a big deal, <laughs> they're still fine, they're still working, so I don't think I want to do any swatches in this video. Uh, let me just like swatch some of the shimmers for you though because they are so beautiful and I need to show you. So I'm just going to swatch the top four shimmers here, I guess, just because I still want to show you some, but I just don't want to get my fingers all dirty because these are extremely messy in the sense that they just don't really come off your hand at all. So here is what the top four shadows look like and this is just one swatch as you can see except for that one but I mean these are so nice and reflective but you can see on my finger now I still have so much shadow left on here so if I were to actually swatch all of these I would be a mess afterwards so I'm just not going to do that. I have already swatched them. I will put in a swatch picture on the screen so you can see them and I will also put up a picture of all of the shadows inside of my palette with the names on the shadows so that you can kind of see them as we go. If you were maybe thinking about picking up any of these now you know what their names are and all of that so that I don't have to take them out of the palette and pick them up every time I you know talk about them because that way I just end up like ruining them and dropping them and it's just not a good time so we're just not going to be doing that. So should I start off by doing a look or should I start off with my thoughts on these? Maybe I'll just start off with like how I feel about all of these shadows and then we can go into doing the look afterwards. So <laughs> when I first swatched these, let me tell you, this neon pink down here is probably the shadow that I've had that has swatched the worst in my whole life. I was so worried. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna make this work. There's no way this is going to be a good shadow. Let me just show you what I mean by this one swatching really bad. But honestly, this just goes to show that swatches don't mean anything, especially with mattes. With shimmers, yes, you can definitely see what a shimmer is going to look like, but for a matte like this, swatches so incredibly bad and like even when you try to build it up it just looks really patchy it looks just you know what I mean like that doesn't look like a good shadow but I've tried it on my eyes now like three times and I've had no issues with it I think it's a great shadow so just something to keep in mind like just because something swatches bad doesn't mean it's going to apply bad on the eyes and I feel like I say that about my dubious place mattes all the time because they don't swatch the best at all but I mean I I love working with the dubious place mattes so it really just goes to show that you can't judge a matte shadow based on the swatches. Um, here is another shadow though that I do want to talk about. It's this one. So I'm actually going to take this out so I can tell you the name of this because this is called Wednesday. So this is a beautiful kind of berry... I don't know how I would explain this, but you can see the color of it. It's almost like a raspberry shade. It's so beautiful, but my problem with this is that I swatched it the first day I got it and it almost kind of got hard pan. And I don't know why, so now when I try to swatch this, like, even if I'm digging my finger really hard into it, it's really hard to get anything off of it. Like, I just, I can't really pick anything up. So, even when I take a brush now and I really dig my brush into it, like, I'm basically getting nothing on my brush, which is kind of weird. Like, I'm swirling my brush in here and I barely get anything on my brush. I can't pick some of it up if I am really, really heavy-handed. But I don't know what happened to the shadow, so 
I really don't know. Uh, but I mean, the first time I used it, it was fine. So maybe I just need to kind of scrape off the first layer of this. Let me try that. So I'm just going to take like the back end of a spoolie here and kind of scrape off some of the top. And I'm going to try again with a clean brush now and see if I'm able to pick anything up. So you can see I was able to pick up a lot more this time. I'm not sure it's probably not going to swatch very well, but you can see now that I don't know what the deal with the shadow is. It's very strange, but just be careful, I guess, when you swatch the mattes that they might get hard pan. I don't know if that goes for all of them. I haven't had any problems with the other ones. And also the only other shadow that I had a hard time with was the orange. Let me just take this one out as well. So this one is called Soda Pop. And my problem with the shadow, let me just... I said I wasn't going to swatch and here I am swatching all of them. But the problem with the shadow is that it picks up beautifully on your finger, but as soon as you go in with a brush and you try to pick any of this up, it's really, really hard to get anything on your brush. So this is my MAC 242 brush, and this is a brush that I love to use for shimmers. So like I'm digging pretty hard in here, and not a lot has come on my brush. So as you can see, like it's really just hard to pick up. Um, the best way that I've found to use this, like I said, is with my finger. And I also, if I can find my little sponge tip thingy. So I have one of these, which is supposed to be used for picking up glitter. So let me show you up close. So this is basically a silicone applicator. And this works beautifully to pick up this shadow. So you can see, like, I basically coated my brush now. And this works so well. Like, this is just <laughs> so easy. So... I will say that this is the only shadow that I had this problem with and I also did talk to the owner of the brand and she said that this shadow in particular is a different formula than all of the other shimmers that I have here. So this is the only one that you would probably have a problem picking up on a brush. I have not had this issue with any of the other shimmers. So just something to keep in mind. And those were like all of the shadows that I felt like, I, not that I was struggling with, but that I had an opinion on, if that makes sense. So I, I will say I've had a really good time playing with all of these, so I think we should get into doing an eye look because I really want to dig into these because they are literally so beautiful. Like the shimmers in this palette that I have here are just out of this world. So yeah, I'm going to start by priming my eyes with my MAC Bang Button Soft Ochre as always. So I just hit pan on my paint pot again. I feel like I bought a new one like two months ago. <laughs> I go through these so fast, but then again, I do my eye makeup at least once a day, so that probably explains it. So I'm going to wash off my swatches here now, and then we're going to get into this. And I don't know what I want to do today. I'm kind of feeling something blue, even though I feel like I've been playing with blue so much lately, but I just, I love blue. I can't help it. I just feel like it looks really good on my eyes, so maybe we'll do something kind of blue and green. Could that be an idea? I don't have any green mats, but I do have this kind of... I don't know how to even explain this. It's kind of like a purple blue. So maybe I will use that in my crease. Should I use maybe some of that shadow that I said got hard pan just so you can see how that performs? Maybe I will use that kind of raspberry shade on my lower lash line, but in my crease I'm going to go in with this. So I'm just going to start by tapping this on in my crease. And when I was working with these mattes, I found them all to be very buildable actually, which is kind of strange with a formula like this because they are a little bit dry. So a lot of the time dry shadows don't really want to build, but I found that these build really nicely, which is always a nice surprise. And if it looks like this is kind of changing color when it's sharing out, it's simply just because my MAC Paint Pot is yellow based. And I had the same issue with uh, the Jeffree Star Blue Blood Palette with some of the blues in there, that the blues just don't really look that good on top of my MAC Paint Pot for whatever reason. But I like it so much as my base, I feel like most shadows just work on top of it that I don't want to change it. So we're just going to have to deal with that. So it's if it's looking a little bit kind of muddy just right up here, it's not because of the shadow. It's totally because of the eyeshadow primer. So I think since I don't have any other mattes that are like a dark blue or anything like that, I'm going to use this uh, purple to deepen this up with. This is called Burlesque. And I'm just going to be packing this in my outer corner. And I actually found this to be a really good purple. It's not as dark as I would have liked, but... It definitely seems like it performs really nicely. I'm just gently kind of pulling this through my crease as well. 
And so you can see it doesn't really get like super dark because the shadow just simply isn't that dark. So this is probably as dark as I'm going to get it. And the reason why it's looking darker in my crease is just because I'm layering it on top of the blue. Just dipping back into the blue again and I'm just running this right in my crease just to make sure that these two shadows are nice and blended. So there is a little bit of kick up with some of these mattes. Um, not the raspberry one and not really the neon one, but with the blue and the purple there's a little bit of kick up, but nothing crazy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to go in with a shimmer and deepen up the outer corner even more. So I know I said I was going to do a green and a blue look, but that might change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this very, very dark shimmery purple up here. The shadow is so beautiful. I am going to recommend that you do spray these shimmers though because they are very, how do I explain it? They're a little bit crumbly, but they're also super, super creamy. So they remind me a little bit of the Anastasia formula. Now, I don't have a lot of Anastasia palettes, but the ones that were in the Riviera palette are kind of similar to these that you will get a lot of odd if you don't spray them and apply them wet. I mean, they still work fine, but if you want to make it easier for yourself, you should probably spray them or use some glitter glue. So I'm like looking for my Fix Plus, which I found. So I'm going to spray this. And I'm going to pop that right in the outer corners here. And I'm also just gently putting it into my crease and mixing it in with the kind of blue-purple mixture that I have. So I'm basically treating this more as a matte by putting it in the outer corner to use it to deepen up the look with, but since I don't have any other mattes, I don't really have a choice. And a little goes a long way with these shadows, so you can see I probably almost put on a little bit too much because now it's like all up in my crease. So I'm just going to take a fluffy brush and just blend a little bit more. So I want this to be kind of like a dark, sultry, smoky kind of look. So for my next shadow, I'm going to dip into this one right here and I'm going to put that in the middle of my lid. And then I think for the rest of my lid, I'm going to use... This one, maybe I'll use the yellow. I haven't decided. I have used this one in a look already and I really loved it. Maybe I'll use that, I don't know. Let's just start with this one right here because I don't think I've used that one yet. And like I said, I'm gonna put that right in the middle of my lid. Also just mixing it into the purple here on the outside. And I would say that these shadows, as well as the ABH ones, kind of perform better when you take it a little bit slower and you build them up because that way they don't become all like crumbly and stuff on your eyelid. I was having such a hard time with the ABH formula. I don't know why. I feel like everyone else just loves that formula, but I had to really learn how to work with it. And I find that these shadows perform very similarly to the ABH shimmers. And as you can see, they are so beautiful. Alright, so for the rest of my lid, what do I want to do? I definitely want to use one of the greens. You know what? I'm just going to go in with this one because you guys haven't seen how this is in action, even though I have, and it's so beautiful, so I need to just use that. So I'm going to put that on the rest of my lid, I think. Like, is that just not so pretty? Alright, so I think for my lower lash line, I'm going to go ahead and do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to take this uh, kind of raspberry shade. What was this called again? I'm so bad with names. It's called Wednesday. So I'm going to take that on a small brush and just put that on my lower lash line. And hopefully the shadow works fine now. I'm still having a bit of a hard time just picking anything up on my brush. But let's see if I'm able to get this to build up. So it's taken quite a few dips into the pan to get any shadow up on my brush. But as you can see, once you get it on the eyes, it's really, really pretty. And I feel like there was just something wrong with the shadow or something because I've never seen a shadow do this before. So I feel like maybe I just got unlucky with this one. And to be honest, like every indie brand that I've ever ordered from when it comes to single shadows, I've always had one or two shadows that have kind of given me a hard time. And I feel like with indie brands, you almost have to excuse them. Not that you should, not that you shouldn't expect everything to be perfect. But, you know, when you have people hand pressing shadows, I feel like they're just, 
bound to be some duds in there from time to time and I feel like I need to just be a little bit easier on the indie brands, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like if I were to review a Too Faced palette, obviously I'm going to be way harsher with someone who's been into the business for that long and who has big factories and who have people making their shadows for them. They have like quality control and just like there's so many things they have in their advantage that indie brands do not. So for that reason, like I feel like when I'm reviewing single shadows from indie brands that are just starting up that you almost have to kind of expect things to not always be perfect, if that makes sense. So I am probably reviewing these in a different way than I would if this was a Natasha Denona palette, like if that makes any sense. And I feel like maybe I've been a little bit too harsh on some of the other indie brands that I've tried, especially uh, Davina and Cleona, because some of their shadows were so beautiful, but I feel like I focused a lot more on the things that were bad about the shadows that they had than what was good about the shadows that they had. I don't know, I feel like at this point I'm just kind of rambling, but I also feel like maybe I should consider the fact that they are indie brands and that they probably don't have all their shit together yet because they are just starting up. Like, Glaminatrix have not been around for that long, so I feel like I need to give them not the benefit of the doubt, but just kind of understand that, you know, where they are in the process of their brand is not going to be the same as where some of the bigger brands are in terms of quality and such, and that they are still playing around with formulas, they are still trying to figure out the perfect way to do things, and this isn't going to be like the end result of what their products are going to be like, and this is still a work in progress if that makes sense. So just something to kind of keep in mind when you are ordering from indie brands that maybe things aren't always going to be perfect and that doesn't mean that, you know, the brand is bad and that all of their products don't work. It just means that they are still learning and that is probably going to improve in the future, especially with constructive criticism and having people, you know, tell them the issues that they do have with the shadow. So I think it's important that we are respectful and that we maybe don't like bash the brands that are just starting out as much as we would bash bigger brands because I don't know it just makes more sense to me so <laughs> I don't even really know why I'm rambling I mean you can look at my eyes like this turned out really really good and I feel like the thing with me with these shadows is that some of them took a little while to figure out how to work with but at the same time I'm just like I'm so inspired and I still want to sit down and play with these and I have a really good time playing with these even though not all of the shadows perform beautifully right away and it is a little bit of a learning curve but I am actually really happy with this so should I do anything else? I kind of want something in my inner corner but I don't know what. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my Beauty Junkie glitter by Stila and I'm going to put that on like the first third or so of my lower lash line because I just love the look of some glitter down there. And I'm just going to use a brush as usual because I just like the more precise application. I just think it looks so pretty. Oh, I love this. And I think this is going to be it for shadow. So I'm going to put something in my waterline. Maybe I'll use the new one from ColourPop because I want to I wanna figure out if these are the same formula as the uh, regular ones. So maybe I'll take... Oh, this one is new. I haven't seen this one. DTLA? What is this? It's like a dark blue or something. How do I not have this already? That's kind of pretty. I'm gonna pop this in my waterline and then I'm gonna put on some lighter mascara and I'll be right back. All right, so this is the eye look all complete. As for the uh, ColourPop liner, this went in my waterline perfectly, just like every other liner. So I feel like if anything, the formula is even creamier than it used to be. So if you're having a problem with some of your ColourPop liners maybe being a bit dry, I feel like they've improved the formula, either that or they're the same as they used to be. But I never had any problems with any of my other liners drying out, so I can't really say for sure, but I want to say that I'm definitely very happy with the new formula, whatever the new formula is, I think it's great. So for lipstick, I'm going to use my Mother by Kat Von D. This is one of my all-time favorite liquid lipsticks, I think, so I'm going to put this on, and then I guess we can talk a little bit more about these shadows before we solve this video.
All right, so to sum up, uh, what do I feel about these shadows? Overall, I am super happy with most of these. Like I said, there was two that I have a bit of a problem with, and that was the matte down here that you can almost kind of see that it's got like a little bit of hard pan. I don't know what happened to this. This is probably just a fluke. I can't imagine all of the other shadows being like this. So I really don't know, but I would assume that this isn't something that always happens. So for me, this one was a bit of a dud as well as the orange, but once I figured out that I could use a sponge tip applicator to apply that with, it's still fine and like I said this is the only shadow in here that is that shimmer formula that you're not able to pick up on a brush and like I said I also talked to the owner and she said that she might actually discontinue that shadow because it's not like all of the other ones so just something to keep in mind but overall I'm really happy with these shadows I can't wait to try more from the brand I know they are coming out with a palette in not too long and I will be the first one to purchase that I will tell you that much so yeah I'm really happy with this and I also had no problems with wear at all with these they didn't crease on me at all which most shadows don't crease on me so that's not really an issue and I can't promise that wouldn't happen to you but the last times I wore these I wore them for like 10 hours and they wore beautifully I had no problems at all so to sum up, overall I really really like these shadows and I'm really happy that I have them in my collection even though some of them ended up being duds but I just want you to keep in mind that when you are ordering from very small indie brands that you know don't have like the biggest following yet not only are you buying their shadows but you are also supporting their dream of becoming a big makeup brand so you know yes you might sometimes have a dud here and there but the money at least kind of goes to a good cost it's not like you're giving it to Jeffree Star you know so just something to keep in mind that when you are supporting small brands maybe don't expect everything to be perfect right away because they are still in the process of learning and it's going to take a long time for them to actually perfect their formulas so if that is something that makes you uncomfortable and you don't want to risk spending your money on that I totally understand and I get why a lot of people are a little bit scared of maybe ordering from indie brands because they don't know what the quality is going to be like and I think that's totally fair but for me part of trying out new brands is discovering new brands that I really like and along the way you are going to end up having some shadows that just don't perform as good as you would like them to so that was going to sum with this video. I'm really happy with how this look turned out, actually. I think this is beautiful. So if you've tried anything from this brand, let me know down below what your experience was. I would love to hear about it. So thank you so much for watching, as always. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, and I will see you in my next one.